Hey, my name is Ahmad Harb, and uh, I am the director of research at Arab Center, Washington, D.C. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Iraq, and uh, uh, with us today, we have uh, Dr. Abbas Qadim, uh, who is uh, the uh, director of the Iraq Initiative and the senior fellow at uh, the Atlantic Council. And uh, uh, we're going to be discussing with him uh, Iraqi issues and the complicated situation uh, in, uh, in that country. Uh, Dr. Abbas, uh, uh, hello, how are you? Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad. Good to see you. Um, we, uh, I mean, Iraq is going through some really tough times, uh, economically, politically, socially, uh, and in foreign policy, obviously. Uh, President Barham Saleh just chose uh, uh, former uh, Najaf uh, governor uh, Adnan uh, Zurfi uh, to be, uh, to form the new government uh, after uh, Mr. Muhammad Allawi failed uh, to form that government. Uh, what what do you think? This is probably a big question, but what what do you think are the chances for Mr. Zorfi to actually succeed where Mr. Alawi failed? Well, Iraqi politics is always contentious. Uh, uh, Mr. Al Zorfi uh, has uh, been in the political process for um, a long time since uh, two thousand four. And uh, he has uh, created many friends and many enemies. So definitely that will be uh, uh, at play. Um, I believe that uh, it is going to be a, a hard fight for him to get a confirmation in the parliament. Uh, so far, he has a decent level of support, but his opponents are not giving up and they are trying to work as much as they can to uh, force a replacement uh, before it gets to a parliamentary vote. Uh, this is one of the downsides of the uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, political apportionment among uh, Iraqi political parties. The prime ministership normally is left uh, for the Iraqi Shia blocs. Right. And uh, the going theory is that for that position to be filled uh, the, the nominee and the candidate must have a, a consensus among the major Shia blocs. So far, uh, whether it is um, Muhammad Tawfiq Allawi or Adnan Zurfi, neither of them has that consensus. Uh, it might not have anything to do with them, but it is with the nature of the uh, uh, political rivalries and also uh, what every side's view of what is best for Iraq being right. pro-America, being pro-Iran, also on domestic issues as well. Yeah, uh, do, you, do you think this is just a, a, a subtext here? Uh, do you think that his, uh, uh, what, what is seen are uh, the, uh, his good relations with the United States would be helpful or not so helpful? Well, uh, it is not helpful to have strong relations with one side or another. Uh, right. Too much uh, closeness to the United States needs to have uh, a, a similar ability to work with the Iranians. This is the sad fact of Iraqi politics these days and for the past years. Uh, and uh, I think any prime minister who is in one camp, whether it is in the Iranian camp or in the American camp, without having toleration from the other side, it is not going to be helpful for, for the uh, prime minister to govern well and to create consensus inside Iraq because both countries have tentacles and strong uh, uh, levels of impact and influence inside Iraq and either side can thwart uh, the prime minister's effort as we have seen in the past. Right. Uh, um, I mean, are, are there any specific lessons, do you think, that he can learn from uh, Muhammad Allawi's experience? Well, uh, there are many. Uh, one of the reasons why Muhammad Tawfiq Allawi uh, failed uh, is that he kept his cabinet formation a secret. He did not let anyone in and he didn't do enough consultation with various powers. He attacked the parliament and these are the people who are supposed to go and yeah, vote exactly. for him and called them corrupt and uh, accused some of yeah, them not, of not, not very politic <laughs> yes not political at all and he also uh, have been uh, seen as a uh, a person who did not communicate with with the population at large he also chose some of uh, the the people in the cabinet at least the names that came out 
uh, in the media were completely unqualified, which really defeated uh, his promises of having a professional uh, uh, and also in uh, a cabinet with integrity. Many of his people have had uh, checkered past to say it mildly or uh, nicely. Right, yeah. So Adnan could probably benefit from those lessons and change the style. Uh, I, I know this is uh, going to uh, be a bit <laughs> tough to answer, but and uh, I'm going to be putting you on a on a little bit of a uh, of a limb here. But uh, what are his chances, really? I mean, uh, how long can he go without necessarily without going for that government, without forming? It's a very good question, uh, but if I were to probably uh, maneuver the answer a little bit, it is not about the chances. He can easily get, uh, secure a confirmation, uh, yeah. but the question is what happens after the confirmation. We know yeah. that he can get the numbers if he bribes enough blocks to get uh, the, the, the uh, to vote for him, and you know, clear the Kurds are not right. interested much in the governance and in the ideals of democracy. They want what they want which is uh, somebody who will let them do their own thing and not bother them as it happened in the past. Right. If he gives them that, definitely they will, they will vote for him happily. The Sunnis, uh, uh, same thing. Uh, basically, they are uh, very uh, happy to uh, keep the ministries that they, they will be given as fiefdoms and use them for their own personal en enrichment, uh, and they will do that. Uh, uh, Shia groups, if he bribes enough Shia blocks uh, to get the to complete the picture and get a multi-partisan things, uh, he can get that. But the problem with it is how many positions and how much power should he relinquish to these groups uh, and still keep a um, uh, some kind of semblance of legitimacy uh, and also be able to govern because if he gives these people all what they want, he will be completely defanged. And right. the, next, the, the task for the next um, prime minister uh, cannot be complete and fulfilled unless he is strong and he wields all kinds of power and consensus in his yeah. hands. So he can make his confirmation a uh, reality, but it can be at the expense of his success. And he might face the fate of uh, uh, Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi right. if he doesn't have, uh, if he doesn't play it carefully. Right. Um, uh, well, Iraq is going through some really tough economic times, uh, and uh, right now, with the uh, with the drop in uh, the actually the collapse of oil prices, uh, Iraq is one of those countries that's going to be really really suffering from uh, the Iraqi economy is going to really get the big hit. Uh, what what can the Iraqi government, whether it is the sitting one, the caretaker one uh, right now, or if a future Iraqi government, what can they do to really uh, stem the tide, so to speak, of this collapse in the economy? Well, right now, there is not much that can be done because there is a preponderance of uh, or, or an accumulation of uh, many problems that are happening, happening all at once. First, you have the chronic problems of Iraq, uh, which is is uh, the, uh, that, that we know, problems with the uh, depleted infrastructure, um, a lot of corruption, bad governance, uh, the destruction that happened from the uh, uh, many years of, uh, in fact, decades of wars and conflict. Uh, these are there. And on top of them, you have what you just said, the, um, the, the problem of uh, oil prices. If oil prices continue on this trajectory for the balance of the year, um, probably it will not be uh, useful economically for Iraq to sell the oil because uh, the, the, the uh, cost or the overhead cost for, for exporting oil will be more than what Iraq will collect. It will come to a few dollars on the barrel that Iraq will get. And 95% of Iraqi budget comes from oil. So that's uh, a disaster that is in the making for Iraq. Also, then there is this problem of Corona um virus right. uh, yeah i was uh, going to get to that yeah and and you know iraq i mean the minister of and we probably talk about the minister of health he was complaining that he could not get five million dollars from the government to make uh, some preparations for meeting the the uh, pandemic if this wow. uh, spreads in a way like iran on Italy or italy god forbid then iraq will be will be exhausted completely and none of what we talk about matters Right. Yeah. This is uh, 
this is something that they they have to really address right away because uh, yeah. it can really uh, wreak havoc on uh, on the country. Um, uh, on on the, you know what what are the how are the uh, different militias today? We 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 witnessed last week there was a, an attack on uh, uh, the Taji uh, uh, military base, and uh, we witnessed the retaliation from the United States against uh, certain Qatayb uh, Hezbollah and uh, other uh, uh, militant groups. Uh, wh 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 where are we here? Uh, I mean, uh, who's uh, are, are we going to just uh, continue like this, or will there be some sort of a breaking point where, uh, you know, uh, either the United States or these militias just simply decide that this is uh, just adding to the instability of the country, and uh, this is not really very conducive to uh, how Iraq can really rebuild itself? Well, this is a huge question. Uh, the militias uh, and all of the other the fighting groups, first, they are not monolith. Uh, they have various uh, persuasions, mixed loyalties, and many Id uh, identities within the, the, the large group. Uh, also, uh, the, the, uh, the problem of the militias is a failure of the government to implement the 2016 law of the right. popular mobilization units, uh, yeah. um, both Prime Ministers Abadi and uh, Abdel Mahdi did not do much to implement that. Uh, and uh, on the one hand, uh, those fighting groups were uh, a major, co uh, uh, major cause or a major element in defeating ISIS. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, under the umbrella of the, um, the, the um, popular mobilization units, you have a lot of um, malign activities that are happening by, not by everybody, but by certain groups that are well known. So we are having a hot potato here. On the one hand, they are needed uh, as long as there is a threat of terrorism. Uh, I don't believe that the Iraqi security forces can hold their own ground without the help from these fighting groups. Uh, also, they are armed and they are strong, and nobody in Iraq is interested in uh, going against them. That's one side. The other side is that those who complain about the, uh, the, the fighting groups and the militias, mostly, you know, we are concerned here with Washington and in the United States. Let's remember right. that, you know, uh, the, the original sin of, of the whole problem here is, lies with the United States. They failed between 2003 and 2011 to uh, see uh, the, the, or, or work uh, effectively to form credible Iraqi security forces uh, that right. uh, led to the meltdown of, of the, the army and right. other forces that the U.S. built uh, in right. June of 2014. And that was what really caused the militias to regroup and be there in the first place. So right. it's rich for some people who failed to do what they were supposed to do to keep Iraq as a, a strong ally, uh, to come back and complain uh, of the uh, the result of their of their failures. That's one side, but that doesn't mean we should allow these groups to continue uh, unfettered. Uh, there needs to be a hard work, hard decisions, bold decisions to be made by the Iraqi government, uh, and they should get also all of the help they can to do it. There, there is that's one side. The other side here is that. Uh, the, uh, the the issue of the militias right now is that it is not just an Iraqi decision. Uh, the militias received uh, support from Iran, uh, right. and they receive also support from internal forces inside Iraq, and that is a fact. Mm -hmm. Many of them do receive that kind of support. Uh, right now, there is a new kind of formation. They are moving into an insurgency mode, regrouping, uh, renaming and rebranding some of their names, like this new Osbat right, okay. Iftarin, uh, which just started recently. Uh, it seems like a way to camouflage the, uh, some groups in, within the popular mobilization unit. So, you know, uh, because the, the, the existing ones are well known, their headquarters are known, and they are easy to bomb and to target. So by making a new brand, uh, it will kind of uh, cover uh, who gets right. involved and then give a, an unknown uh, name to known actors. And will this uh, kind of uh, work uh, or, or, or this kind of attempt uh, uh, provide the results they intend them to, to provide? We don't know, but definitely uh, it is, we see that there are many attempts to adapt 
with the realities that the United States now is hitting hard against certain groups whenever the, an activity happens that the U.S. doesn't like. Uh, time will tell, and I think this is going to be one of the huge tasks before the next um, prime That's, minister, yeah. the one that might make or break his uh, premiership. This is uh, this is uh, this is what what I was going to follow up with was uh, you know uh, a new prime minister if he establishes his government where are the armed forces uh, I mean will 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 he be assured of the support the full the full support of the armed forces considering his really uh, very precarious kind of political situation the Iraqi armed forces do not have a unified entity as they used to uh, before 2003. Right. Uh, in that day, the Iraqi army uh, was an institution that has a life of its own. In many cases, it's a, it was a state within the state. Right. Uh, now, it is um, nothing more than just uh, uh, many uh, or a mixed group so with, with mixed loyalties. Uh, each one of them reports to their own uh, ethno -secular. Right. Uh, boss, if you will. The Iraqi army today is almost like the Lebanese army in the, during the Civil War time. Right. Yeah, uh, okay. You know, whenever you take them to fight against one group, those who belong to that group uh, will drop their uniforms and say, we don't want to do that. Uh, it is That is one of the challenges that met uh, or forced the Iraqi government to use uh, other fighting forces uh, with more, with better doctrine and more uh, unified uh, loyalties. Right. The task ahead is really to consolidate the Iraqi uh, security forces into an uh, entity, uh, take politics out of the uh, the, the uh, security forces works, and then make sure that they report uh, completely to a good chain of command, well-defined structure and hierarchy. Now it is really hard. The Ministry of Defense is nothing more than just a contracting uh, agency uh, and personnel agency. It doesn't do anything uh, and it's not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the military. There is a lot of confusion on who reports to whom. I think uh, there needs to be a, a separate task force, uh, maybe uh, under the supervision of the next prime minister, to fix uh, all of these glitches and problems with the Iraqi security forces. Otherwise, Iraq will always be vulnerable to threats and will right. be uh, will will be forced to use auxiliaries such as the popular mobilization units and others. Right. Uh, uh, finally, one one last question: uh, Iran. Uh, uh, I mean, it's 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 tough to say that you know when uh, an Iranian uh, Iran's foreign policy today that. The, uh, the unfortunate uh, coronavirus infections in Iran, and the, it's really a very, very major pandemic inside Iran. Uh, 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 is, the, is the Iranian leadership too busy to really pay attention to Iraq? Is there an opportunity for Iraqi political forces to work a little bit outside of the influence of Iran? Uh, of Iran? Well, uh, Iran is a, a big question whenever we talk about Iraq and Iraqi politics. Uh, right. Iran is probably the one that uh, the country that holds most influence and impact uh, because Iran uh, puts a huge importance on Iraq and its relations with Iraq, rightfully so. Um, um, and uh, the, the Iranians, no matter what challenges they have, they have proven in the past 40 years to be very adaptive, uh, very savvy. And I believe that uh, those who are in charge of the Iraqi dossier are not uh, in, uh, deterred or distracted by what goes on domestically with the right. coronavirus and the economic problems. So, uh, but but on the other hand, they suffered a huge setback with the killing of General Soleimani, who was the institutional right. memory for for Iran's involvement in Iraq. I believe, as I wrote recently, that uh, the this current government formation will be the uh, probably the best test that will reveal to us how much power Iran has left. Uh, or how much power has lost in Iraq. But Iran, I would not discount it uh, when it comes to Iraqi politics, domestic and international politics right. of Iraq, uh, anytime soon. Uh, they will always be there because they cannot afford losing Iraq. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us today, Dr. Abbas Qadim. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, input and your uh, expertise on this very, very uh, 
tough situation that uh, Iraq is going through. Uh, and we appreciate you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.